Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, August 20th, 2021, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2021 Virginia gubernatorial election. Roanoke College, a college in Virginia, just released their first ever poll of this race. This is the first time we've seen a non-Republican poll released from this state, and it holds exactly what we have expected from this Virginia race. Now, this election, while seemingly was far away just a few months ago, is now 74 days away. Terry McAuliffe and Glenn Youngkin will face off on November 2nd, 2021. This is quite literally right around the corner. And then you are going to start to get into questions about Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, but the primary focus of this video will be the gubernatorial election, though this poll does reveal more information than just the Virginia race. But if you're taking a look at the uh, results, you can find them on Real Clear Politics, you can find them from Roanoke College, you can find them a lot of the places because it shows that Terry McAuliffe takes an eight-point lead over Glenn Young. And the reason why we're going to actually skip off of real clear politics is just because, you know, they don't exactly have all of the polling data and we are only focusing on one. But you'll see here that they released the results showing that Terry McAuliffe receives 46% of the vote to 38%. Now, this was the technically second uh, race uh, poll that was released that wasn't a partisan one. Virginia Commonwealth University released one, but I wouldn't exactly say that I would trust that one nearly as much as I trust this one, and we'll talk about a bit why in just a moment. But main takeaway here, Virginia, uh, sorry, Roanoke College shows that McAuliffe takes an eight-point lead. They also show that Delegate Hala, Hala Ayala, the lieutenant governor, nominee, wins by six points, and the attorney general's race is a margin of eight points as well. So pretty much the attorney general's race, lieutenant governor's race, and the governor's race all show Democrats with above a five-point advantage despite this poll being a non-partisan pollster. But the reason why, personally, I don't exactly trust the Roanoke, uh, not the Roanoke, the Virginia Commonwealth University poll is because of how many people that they show are in the other column. It shows Terry McAuliffe in a lead, as does every single other poll. Not one so far has shown Glenn Youngkin at uh, a certain point above uh, Terry McAuliffe, but you'll see here that Terry McAuliffe only receives 40% of the vote and Glenn Youngkin receives 20, 37% of the vote. That would effectively leave out 23% of the Virginia demographic group. And then you look over to undecided and yet the undecided is only 9%. So then you ask, how does this happen? Well, essentially, it's the product of Virginia Commonwealth University, I guess, over exaggerating the amount of other voters there are in this race. And what other means essentially are third party voters or write in as uh, third party candidates or write in candidates. It, but it doesn't make sense, being honest about it, that 15% of voters in Virginia are either voting third party or for a write-in candidate. Every other poll shows it at 2%, 4%, 3%. Not one shows it above 4% besides Virginia Commonwealth University. And I really don't trust it. And it has the highest margin of error out of all of them. So I will say that Roanoke College probably holds a much better uh, form in terms of the methodology that they used, everything about that just seems to be uh, a much stronger poll to actually trust when it comes down to a race that really hasn't been polled by much. And if you were to just look at the Virginia Commonwealth University poll, you might think the race is a lot closer than it actually is, but you actually need to take a look at the uh, individual splits and the breakdowns because it reveals some interesting results. But let's take a look at the uh, Virginia race and the issues that are most important to voters. Now, the economy is always an important issue to voters, and that's not an anomaly in the state of Virginia. COVID-19, also an important issue to voters. Those are the top two issues for voters across the state. Then it goes down to race relations. It's fascinating that we even have to consider race relations an important issue. You know, we're talking about uh, half a century after the civil rights era. This is just something that is really important to point out that America uh, is in this position, that this is a very important thing to voters. Education as well, 7%. Healthcare, 6%. I mean, you're talking about a lot of things that have previously been dismissed as either been squashed or no longer up for consideration. Obviously, some things are very important to voters still, but the economy and COVID-19 take the cake away the same way they do in almost every other state. And you take a look at the way that uh, voters look at Joe Biden. They look at other people. Joe Biden holds a 48% approval and a 43% disapproval. Now, looking at the national numbers, do I buy that? Maybe at this point. Would I have bought it a month ago? No. Because a month ago, Joe Biden was in a much better position. July 20th, you were talking about a 10-point lead nationwide. If Virginia skews 5% more Democrat than the rest of the country, why wouldn't it be a 15-point lead? But right now, Joe Biden's hovering around that time where certain polls show him in the negative, certain, certain polls show him in the positive. The adjusted numbers for Ipsos Reuters shows Joe Biden at minus 5. Other ones show him up plus 3. 
for Virginia to put him up plus five, I will say that I probably expect more citizens to approve of Joe Biden at this point, but not every state is the same. And this is definitely a better one than what we've seen in some other polls that have been taken earlier on this year that really just don't make sense. Ralph Northam has an approval rating of 52% and a 38% disapproval rating. That is a very good number for the Democratic Party. Just 29% of voters view the Republican Party as favorable. 50% say unfavorable. For Democrats, 41% say favorable. 47% say unfavorable. So obviously, while both are in the negative, one is much more in the negative than the other. NRA, a big part of the state of Virginia, they actually have their headquarters there. 33% say favorable, 43% say unfavorable. Actually, the NRA might have moved out uh, from the state of Virginia, but I'm not entirely sure. BLM, 45% say favorable, 36% say unfavorable. It says that they have slipped in a year since they previously asked about the group, but overall still plus nine across the state. So looking around at what this Roanoke College poll is pretty much telling us is that Virginia still holds a lot of the same sentiment that they did in the past. And while they may not necessarily be happy with Biden or Democrats besides Ralph Northam, they certainly are okay with voting for Terry McAuliffe in this race. And if you do a little bit of a flashback to the 2017 Virginia race, you can find this on Real Clear Politics. Unfortunately, I don't have it up on the Roanoke College website, but you can find it here that four years ago today, Roanoke College released a poll that said that Ralph Northam was going to win his race by seven points across the state of Virginia. Now, he ended up winning by nine. And the fact that they're showing Terry McAuliffe today ahead by eight points is drawing parallels between 2017 and 2021, despite this year not really being that much, uh, you know, in comparison in terms of democratic energy, in terms of who's obviously in political office. They also predicted that Joe Biden was going to be winning the state of Virginia in the 2020 election by 11 points. Now, they were right. Joe Biden won the state of Virginia by 10.1%. It was off by just less than a percentage point. Roanoke College has a pretty strong history when it comes down to their nonpartisan polls. Now, they did make a major slip up in 2017, four years ago. They said Northam would win by seven. Fast forward to election day, they said it would be a tie. Obviously, it was not a tie. They seemed to be more accurate a little bit earlier on than they were later on. But in 2020, that was not the case. They actually said Biden was going to win by a higher amount back in the October range, ended up winning by around 10.1%. They got it right on the money on election day. And four years ago today, they also got the 2017 race, but it's not to say that this poll is 100% perfect. Obviously, they have made mistakes, and obviously, you can't trust a poll 100%. But the fact is, this is our first and only real nonpartisan poll that has a lot of credit to the name that we can actually take a look at when it comes down to the state of Virginia. But since 2016, this is what we know so far about the state of Virginia, that Hillary Clinton won the state by five points in 2016. The Democrats have won in the state of Virginia since 2008, they won with Obama twice, and they won with Clinton and Biden. The Democrats now have a trifecta, winning over the House of Delegates in 2019, winning over the state Senate in 2019 as well. When it comes down to the House delegation in the House of Representatives elections, Democrats control 64% of the House seats from Virginia. They also have two Democratic senators. So looking at the state of Virginia, no matter what type of angle you try to take a look at, there's a Dem trifecta, state Senate, House of Delegates, governorship, all with the Democrats. You can see it here. One, two, three, right? Moving over to the House and Senate. In Congress, 67%, 64% of the seats are with Democrats, meaning seven out of 11. Despite Democrats in 2020 only winning 51% of the vote in the popular vote for the election, they hold 64% of the seats. They have two Democratic senators. They have Tim Kaine and Mark Warner, both of which have won by large margins in their recent election bids. So looking around, you know, Virginia, no matter what type of angle that you try to take about this race. And if you take a look at the lieutenant governor's race, I'm trying to see here if they can actually show us um, in Virginia. Let's see if they bring us all the way out there. Virginia, lieutenant governor. Um, let's see. Lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, won in 2017. Mark Herring, won. And while both did run behind Ralph Northam, you're talking about a five-point margin for lieutenant governor. You're talking about a five-point margin for attorney general. So it's nothing bad, especially considering that Virginia's margin for the Democrats on the presidential level has more than doubled, was it, or actually just doubled what it was back in 2016. So that very clearly shows that not only do Republicans not necessarily perform super well in Virginia, that also Donald Trump just didn't perform well at all in 2020. And that also questions now that Glenn Youngkin is beginning to campaign with Mike Pence. Mike Pence meeting up with Glenn Youngkin, holding an event across the state of Virginia. 
I don't exactly understand why. But if you want to compare this race, to 2017. While it isn't a direct comparison, you actually might not be more confident in this race as a Republican than you might have been back in 2017. If you take a look at 2017 polling data, the polling data that was wrong in 2016 but accurate for Virginia, a very similar case to 2020, you'll see here that Ralph Northam leading up to the election. First of all, there were a lot more polls in this race than what we have seen so far. I mean, you can see plenty of polls even before the time period we should have seen numerous ones so far we've only seen republican internals besides this first one from roanoke college but you can see here that there were a lot of polls that showed that ralph northam was going to lead but just days leading up to the election the race was still supposed to be close take a look at some of those margins between ralph northam and ed gillespie right a five point margin according to fox news a one point margin according to the polling company a two point margin according to monmouth university a one point margin according to img insights a six-point margin, according to Change Research. Quinnipiac got it right on the money. They said eight points. That was the margin. Nine points, sorry. That was the margin. Emerson said three. Christopher Newport University said six. Rasmussen Report said a tie. Gravis said five. Optimist said Democrats would lose by three. Trafalgar said Democrats would lose, sorry, would win by one. You know, looking at these polls, while Ed Gillespie didn't really lead in most of them, there were still ones where he was able to take a lead in. In addition, the polls indicated that the race would be much, much closer. Real clear politics averaged it, out, averaged it out to a 3.3% lead for Ralph Northam. So now, compared to 2017 at least, there are more polls indicating that Democrats are in the lead. And the funny thing about that is there are way more Republican internal polls now than there were back in 2017. So the Republican internals are saying that McAuliffe is going to win. The unbiased pollster is saying that Terry McAuliffe is going to win. The Virginia electoral history is saying that Democrats are going to fare well. So looking at the state of Virginia, so far, everything seems to be working out for Terry McAuliffe. Every single thing. Versus 2017, more Democrats are up in the polls. More numbers are better for Democrats for the presidential margin in the most previous presidential election. Donald Trump, though, may not be in this race, but he is in a sense. Donald Trump is being tied to Glenn Youngkin in every single way that he can be by the Democrats. Even Donald Trump himself is putting himself in that position by endorsing Glenn Youngkin not once, not twice, but three times, declaring that Glenn Youngkin was going to make Virginia great again. For a state that just rejected President Trump by 10.1%, a state that used to be amongst the closest on the presidential levels, has now taken a large turn and leap, I would say, towards the left. Yet Donald Trump doubles down, in fact triples down, on a race where he really shouldn't have interjected himself in the first place. Because all that does is give Democrats ammunition. So of course, while Donald Trump may not be in office, he still is a major player in this race, whether he likes it or not. So looking at everything that we've analyzed so far, the Roanoke College poll, the discussion about Joe Biden, the discussion about Mike Pence, the discussion about everything we've seen so far. One thing that I didn't mention, but is still relevant as well, that the betting markets really haven't wavered for Democrats for the past three months. On the 90 day average, Democrats have hovered around the same amount in terms of their chance of victory in the state of Virginia. And I think that this will likely last over the next 74 days. Just looking at everything so far, in addition to the polls, in addition to the election history, the rankings from Cook, Inside Elections, and Sabato's Crystal Ball show that Democrats are favored to win this race, most recently updated by Inside Elections and the Cook Political Report, both of which show him either lean or likely Democrat. All around, there just isn't much here to indicate that things were getting better for Glenn Youngkin. If he was to win this race, given the state's large Democratic presence, would be a major upset. Months ago, I wouldn't have said a major upset. It wouldn't have made sense to say that because Virginia was still a state that had the possibility of being competitive. But just a lot of things have turned away from Glenn Youngkin. A lot of things just simply haven't worked out in the way that Republicans wanted it to in the state of Virginia. And while that may be a combination of Donald Trump, it may be a combination of, you know, hot Mike Project Veritas types of things for Glenn Youngkin. Whatever it is, nothing seems to be working out in his favor. And as unfortunate as that is for the Republican Party, that's exactly what they need to realize ahead of November, that nothing they see so far indicates that they are doing super well, which is why they need to start ramping up their efforts. They need to increase the funds in the state of Virginia. Otherwise, this race is going to turn out the same way 2017 did. Virginia had the possibility of being closed once again, and that Terry McAuliffe as the incumbent, uh, sorry, not the incumbent, as the Democratic nominee with a Democratic governor shouldn't really be winning the race. 
but only one person has actually broken that historical standard in which the incumbent of the White House, their political party was able to win in the state of Virginia. The only time in the 21st century that this has occurred was under Terry McAuliffe in 2013 when he won under President Obama's second term. And now he's back. So if anyone was to defy history again, it would be the person who did it for the first time in the 21st century. And that would be Terry McAuliffe. So you can find the Roanoke College poll on Real Clear Politics and just click the link to read over it yourself. Not much more information than what we covered, but maybe just a little bit uh, more interesting information about who they polled and what they did. All in all, the state of Virginia seems to be at a very similar state to 2017, despite the national environment being a lot different than it was four years ago today. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2021 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.